Welcome to e-commerce marketing with the Pitbulls, where we catch up with craft brands to hear their story and learn how they're growing their e-commerce channel. Hi, I'm Andy. And I'm Lindsay. Today we're joined by John Roman. He's the CEO of Battlebox. Um, so really excited to have this conversation today, John. Uh, I'm going to give you a second, uh, or give you a, a moment in a second to uh, kind of guide us through your background. But looking through your bio here. I um, think you've kind of been been around the bush a few times. Seems like you you have a ton of experience all through the e-commerce space. So I, I think we're going to get a, a ton of uh, of great insights out of this today. Um, yeah, tell me a little bit more about um, Battlebox, how you started it, and kind of kind of where you are now. Sure, Andy, Lindsay, thanks both for having me. Really, really excited to be here today. Um, let's see, Battlebox. Battlebox. We started in 2015. Um, so, you know, you can't really time the market or, or time things, but it was ultimately the optimal time to start what at the time was only solely a subscription box for outdoor and adventure gear. So I think hiking, camping, if it has to do with outside and the out, great outdoors, then it would be battle box. And yeah, it was a different time back then. Customer acquisition costs for sub $5. and not knowing how good we had it. And, you know, if I knew what I knew now, I would have maxed out every single credit card. I would have borrowed money from anybody that would pick up the phone and would have completely taken advantage of um, $5 acquisition costs because, you know, as you guys know, it's it's a completely different game now on on all, all social channels, all advertising. Definitely. And then I have here, you went through an acquisition and then eventually bought bought it back. Tell me about uh, how that went. Yeah, that's not, um, that wasn't the plan. That's not how these things are supposed to go. You, you're, you're building for that exit, which, which we, which we got. And um, <laughs> it, it just ended up, there was an opportunity. Um, so, you know, nothing against our, um, our, our previous owner of uh, Emerge, they're a, um, SPAC out of, uh, out of Toronto, but, um, you know, it's just, uh, anybody, unless you're living under a rock, you've seen what the markets have done in these past couple of years. They've been challenging. They've been really challenging for, for, um, companies that went public via, via, you know, a reverse buyout a uh, SPAC, it's challenging losing, you know, 80, 90% of your market cap, regardless of um, any sort of actual financial decision making on those those stock prices dropping. And it just, it, it was simply an, an opportunity where it was mutually beneficial for us to um, take it back, for them to sell it and us to buy it because you know we know the business better than anyone. We're the ones running it, so it was not part of the plan at all. The plan <laughs> was was get acquired, stick around for two or three years, um, to to receive our earnouts, our bonuses, and I think the economic climate just suggested that there was another path to go. And still can't believe that that it's it's the path we went. But I'm super excited that we that we have it back. Definitely. I think that's a, a really cool perspective because as you mentioned, a lot of people in the space are, are looking for the, you know, kind of grow to to sell, um, you know, kind of direction. So cool to hear the perspective of like, hey, you know, we, we got out, you did everything like, kind of the way that everybody, you know, the dream uh, uh, path for everybody that's like, hey, there's still the meat on the bone here. Let's let's see what we can uh, can do. Yeah, it's interesting. It's again, um, you know, I, I hate to say the same thing again, timing the market, but you know, we timed the market probably almost perfectly, selling in October 2021, at least as far as acquisitions in the e-commerce space go, right? Like everything was still like going up and to the right post-pandemic. Um, it was moments away from correcting, which which everybody dealt with. So it was kind of ideal. And um, I guess if you look at right now, when you know, we bought it back in April, but I would still put April and today in the same time period. This is this is another opportunity. This is if it's not the bottom, it's probably close to the bottom. Certainly, and, um, yeah. yeah, it was another just timing thing where the opportunity was there to to buy back at a fraction of what we had sold it for. 
right. So um, you can't time these things, but you know, sometimes you can, you can create opportunity from, from timing. That's awesome. Well, kind of diving into it today, I, I, one of the reasons why I'm so excited for this conversation is I think you're doing um, a lot on the content side, probably as good as anybody out there. Um, so yeah, I'd love to just kind of get your perspective of you know why that became such a big focus for your business and, and kind of how you how you fell into that and um, you know kind of where where you see it going and, and the effect that's had on your business. Sure. So yeah. So um, you know the two unpopular opinion, but for a business to stay state that the two um, two two parts of the business two um, trying to think of the right word. And it's escaping me, but um, okay. The the two pillars that we make all of our decisions, all business decisions, take this into consideration, which is wild to say, but it's content and community. Community being um, the community that we've that we've grown, that that are BattleBox customers, but bigger than that, right? It could be BattleBox fans, it could be BattleBox uh, vendors. It, it's literally just an ecosystem all the way around, and we take both in a consideration on on the content piece it's it's interesting because it's it was wasn't in our initial um, immediate strategy it was but not like it is today but kind of um listening to our audience we quickly found that that was the way to go so we and this is funny to say because it's such a um you know any cro purist would would have a heart attack what I'm about to say, but it was 2015. It was a different time. We had a pre-purchase survey. Um, so consumers trying to give you the money. We say, no, wait, don't, <laughs> don't click buy yet. Hey, tell us where you heard about us. Now, you know, the best practice is having it post-purchase. But um, at the, you know, eight years ago, nine years ago, it was pre-purchase. Um, just because we didn't know any better was naivety. And it was the usual suspects. Where did you first hear about us? Facebook, Google, Twitter. Pinterest, et cetera. And we had a, a other that you could click. And month two, we we had about 20% of our, our first time purchasers click on other and type in Curran 1776. We don't know who that is. We um <laughs> we're, we we had a we had an interesting, arguably at the time, it was probably bleeding edge on 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 thoughts, thought thought logic, but our go-to market strategy in, in, in February, 2015, we were sending at least 30 boxes every month of our product to YouTube reviewers and, and influencers. Um, and that was, now that's standard operating protocol for anybody, right? You know, you have to send your stuff to people um, to get more eyes on it. But, it, you know, 2015, that wasn't like that was, I don't say it was crazy, but it just definitely wasn't best practice people knew yet. I feel like that's really hitting the hype cycle like this year, honestly. Like yeah. in the last year or so, we're hearing so much about influencer and how everything's got to be influencer driven. Um, so yeah, that's 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 pretty crazy that you're you're at it in 2015. Right. <laughs> so we I remember um like it was yesterday, we're we're getting these, we're looking at the survey results and we're seeing current 1776. And we open up our Google Sheet where we have these. 30 something boxes we're sending and their corresponding YouTube or Instagram channel. And we don't see, we don't see this current scene, current 1776. So we jump on YouTube, we find him and he sure enough is, is doing an unboxing um, of our box, the best, the highest tier the pro plus and uh, which is what we would send um, influencers and reviewers. It's the only box we send. And we do a couple, a uh, little bit of, you know, back end looking for this person, we find him. He's a paying customer and um, he's driving traffic for us. He's, um, we're, we're quickly saying, okay, this this guy's on to something. So we reach out to him, we're like, hey, please keep doing this. Um, we're going to comp your box moving forward. Like you don't have to pay 150 plus uh, sales tax and shipping anymore. Just keep doing the box. And a few months go by after that. and. He's continuing to to bring like some significant traffic and and just e equally important conversions, and we're seeing as we're growing, his channel's growing as well. Um, and we're just again, it's a timing thing. So 
we reach out again and we're like, hey, keep doing the box. It's going to be free. We're also going to write you a check each month for $500. Do not stop. Like you have to keep doing this. And then the next conversation a few months after that was, um, hey, do you want to move your your family, your wife, your three kids, all of you guys down to Georgia and do this full time and by this just content be like the face of our brand? And it was a that's a wild, wild A to A to Z, but we we just saw that there was clearly something there. Um and and once he came on full time and Brandon joined the team, at that point we were able to really just double down, triple down on content. You know, prior to that, he was doing one unboxing every month, and and that was his. He had one piece of content that came out post post shipment, and we quickly said, okay, well we're gonna continue to do that, but we're gonna test gear and we're gonna film it, and we're gonna do this and we're gonna film it, and we're gonna go on adventures and film it, and really just leaned in on it, and. Shortly thereafter, a few months of like putting out uh, exponentially more content, we saw our channel start to spike up and relative spike. Um, we were gaining maybe a thousand subscri- new subscribers a month, which which was a big deal for a, a brand to be getting that kind of momentum. And uh, a, a agency or stu- production studio reached out to us and pitched us on the idea of doing a TV show. And fast forward, there's a whole story there, but um, it, it ended up leading to the Netflix TV show we had, which was kind of the ultimate shoot up and in, in validation of, of this content. content. Yeah, that's awesome. That's the, uh, you know, we were saying, you know, kind of the, the picture perfect storybook exit story, probably the same with the, that's the best you can do in content, right? Right. You can't <laughs> build it and grow until you get picked up by Netflix. Exactly. <laughs> this whole story kind of reminds me, I think it was in like 2014, I was at like a franchise conference and there was a gentleman there presenting and he was trying to tell everybody, listen, even now you need to be thinking of your business as a media company at least having some wing of a media production. Um, How important do you think that is now? Obviously it's, it's so much a part of all businesses now, but I still feel like there's plenty of businesses out there who look at it like it's not worth investing in. And I think there's that moment you're talking about where you see current 1776's channel starting to grow while you're growing and thinking, okay, this could be a good partnership. And then even taking on the ability to help him create that content, that seems like such a huge risk that a lot of companies are still like, I don't know about all that. So can you talk a little bit about the media production side of it? Sure. So, so yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely a, a risk, right? And it was not what everybody else was necessarily doing at the time. But um, I mean, clearly now, you know, whether it was a gentleman in 2014 at the franchise conference talking about it or us taking the chance in, in early 2016. Now we, it's, it's tough to argue that, that, that the content piece and, and, and having a media arm um, is tough to argue that it shouldn't be a part, a part of the business, right? Um, you're, you're spot on. A lot of brands continue to um, with the struggle, right? It, Cause it's not easy to execute. You have to look at things in a completely different lens. I think we're, it also matters, you know, I don't think every brand has to have it. I think you look at where you're at on the, the need want scale and um, the the farther away you're from absolute need and you're closer to the want and you're falling into that discretionary income spend. I think you have to, you have to have it. And, and the reason is because consumers behavior is changing, Right. Um, every year that goes by, consumers want to spend their extra hard-earned dollars with brands that they feel some kind of connection with. Um, you look at, I read an article today about, um, about is it Skims? Um, Kim Kardashian's? Yeah. I think they're, they raised at a $4 billion valuation. They're talking about doing an IPO and it's going to be, if it's successful and execute, it's going to be like this victory that the stock market needs, which is just mind-blowing wild to think of. But you look at what she's done, and then you you take a step back and you look at, I mean, the best, easiest example to talk about is Mr. Beast, 
Um, the guy built content, built community. And then he's like, I'm going to launch a virtual fast food restaurant with no brick and mortar. And we're going to be nationwide in everyone's app. And we're also going to be wildly successful at it. And then we're going to drop a chocolate and cookie company. And the day we launch, we're going to be in all Walmarts nationwide, right? <laughs> Which is something that any brand would would likely be very, very um, hard pressed not to want to have something like that. But you can't just get in, get in. But they were all able to build these brands that almost instantly have success based on their content, right? And it's because their content is is showing a human side of them or an element of them that people connect with. Um, and there's so many, so many examples of this. Another one, the the Nelk Boys. They have a podcast where they've had ridiculous hosts, ridiculous guests on there. And you're like, how do you get Elon Musk? Um, and you and you're just like, wow. But then they they'll drop a brand. They have a a, a hard seltzer product that they're getting in all of all of these grocery stores and all of these places across the country. And you're seeing kind of these content creators and influencers are just um, people with reach with uh, via content now dumping these brands on top. And it's, it's wild because they're, they're, they're reverse engineering it. And it just kind of makes it really, really, really evident that brands that aren't doing it, like, you're going to get left behind. It's, it strikes me. So we work with oftentimes a lot of smaller brands, some bootstrap brands where I think there's more hesitancy, especially with the focus on, you know, customer acquisition cost and, you know, let's make sure that our margins are matching up right off the bat. Um, you know, it, it can be scary to put this investment forward that, Hey, I'm going to put out some money that likely isn't going to turn around immediately. I'm not going to see like, Hey, it's not like you know a paid ad where it's okay. Hopefully, you're you know measuring return immediately from the the ad itself. It's you know, hey, I'm going to be investing in this channel for a while, and hopefully, it builds into something that's valuable. Um, but yeah, I'm curious if you kind of have maybe advice for some of these smaller brands where when we look at, I think a lot of people get overwhelmed when they look at you know Mr. Beast or you know Kim Kardashian, and we see, hey, that's clearly you know, the, the path to some of these multi-billion dollar brands, that's where we're at. But like, how do we get started when we're just looking for, you know, we're still trying to break 100K revenue, 200K revenue in a given month. You know, how do we find the the cash to invest in that? Um, even on the influencer side, you know, it's it's it can be overwhelming just because there's so many options, so many people, um, you know, even just a few free, uh, free boxes going out each month could be, you know, a, a real struggle on the bottom line. So I'm curious if you have any, kind of like where to start or advice for that smaller end. Yeah, so so two a couple answers. One on the 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 influencer piece on on who to send send the product to. If you if you you know, stack rank influencers based on their audience, based on their reach. Um I will 100 odd times out of 100 times choose the the micro. The influencers call it Sometimes sub hundred thousand followers. They're they're the ones that are um, honestly, oftentimes more passionate, more genuine. They're, for lack of better words, grinding and trying to make that work as their possible possible profession. And you're going to get a lot more a lot more effort from those groups. So when you're able to on the influencer side, if you if you're limited by how many you can send, I would put. And I I never put my eggs in one basket, but in this in this scenario, I would put the eggs all in in the micro influencers, and they're just they're going to have the best best return typically. Um, flip side on the the investment from a a content pers- perspective, it's interesting because the barrier to entry now is so minimal. Everyone has. A, a, a video phone, right? Everybody has the ability to record videos. Um, if you have um, a, a decent Android or an or or an, an iPhone, you're you're able to download ridiculous free software like CapCut, where you can with zero. I have zero editing skills 
um, graphics or video on like the Adobe suite that we use. But even even myself at my age, I I can use this app and I can actually put a it's it's not as good as like a professional's video, but I can edit something um somewhat okay. And that doesn't take that doesn't take a lot of time, right? You can you can set aside, record something of of your your journey. And it could be you're trying to get to a hundred thousand, like dollars in sales. Like people want genuine. And I would almost argue that it's good that you're not a video editor because your edit's not going to be well polished, which is even better um, because it's going to actually show that it's genuine and it's it's a story and people want to connect with you. Um, we had to give a couple of weeks ago, we we're having our, so we have a few video editors now full time on the team. And we we're having our, our, our weekly video editing call. And I literally had to say, hey guys, like, you're the most talented group of video editors I know, but for this next group of videos we're doing, can we bring the polish down some? They look too good, which is which is wild to say, but it was because like you you could look at any of our feeds for a week and these videos are just too good, right? It's not we're we're losing some of our genuineness because they're so professional. So we had to we literally had to dumb it down a little bit. Let's bring them back. People want us people want to see genuine, right? You're you're a business owner and and maybe it's just you. Um take your phone, do do some videos, do some slight edits, or don't even edit them. Just throw them up there, right? And and really try a diff a, a few different takes on on what's what type of messaging you're trying to do. Maybe, maybe you're trying to give a, a transparency on on you trying to grow this business as an entrepreneur, right? Or maybe you have a cool story of the business you want to share or it's a cool product like try it all and it's and, and we've gotten really good at it we were literally i was literally on a call today we still um we have a, a new cre a new full-time creator we brought on and um one of our senior guys brandon was like i wish we had like like we can pretty much forecast success on videos but it's still behind the scenes. It's a shotgun approach. And it's it's those little hundred pellets. But because there's a hundred pellets, one of them surely is going to hit the target. And it's it's so true. It just it doesn't it doesn't take as much effort as as you would think. Um, and I think everybody assumes that it does. But I mean, you look at not to discredit influencers, but you look at some of these people that have a lot of following that unpopular opinion are talentless <laughs> um and and they're figuring it out right so yeah. surely think, if you have some business acumen you should be able to figure it out too yeah i think you have a great point that it's you know a lot of times the excuse given is hey it's you know too expensive or takes going to take too much of my time when i'm already strapped and trying to get orders out the door whatever it is you know but i think a lot of it in there is you know, kind of a, a, a nervousness or a fear of putting themselves forward and, and getting out there. And I, I think that's a really great message that like, it doesn't need to be polished. It doesn't need to be perfect. And and probably a lot of the videos will be pretty poor, but, you know, just keep churning them out. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's, you're going to hopefully hit on one, you know? And, and the, and the thing is, I think people will give it a, a, a an attempt. And after two weeks or four weeks, they don't see the success that they thought they needed to see. Um, due to, due to naivety, it, they set an unrealistic goal. Um, and the reality is it's not, it's not quick. Uh, you, you said it a second ago, it's a, it's a long game. Um, people think SEO is a long game. No, this, this is a long, <laughs> game. this makes, this makes SEO look like instant satisfaction, grat gratification. It's, um, it's such a long game on TikTok. So we, we, I remember I grabbed our battle box user, username on TikTok in early 2020. Sat on it for a complete year. Did not do anything with it. Said, well, we don't dance. Why do we even have this? Like, what are we going to do with this? And then in February, 2021, we posted our first video on there. We had weekly meetings talking about what type of content we were going to try. We were taking a lot of previous content we had and chopping it up. Um, we were trying everything. 
we had some mild little tiny successes, but it wasn't, it, it took the better part of an entire year before TikTok really like popped for us. It took a year of posting multiple hundreds, hundreds of videos with very little to no success before before getting some sort of cadence where it was successful. Now it's, it's, our, it's our biggest channel. And that's for an established brand with like a really professional, you know, content department to begin yeah. with. And it's yeah. still, you know, that, that level. Yeah, of we had the, we had the resources that we still can crack it. Um, and, and when we look back on what the success videos were, a lot of them were the most genuine, least edited ones. How do you think about, I know a lot of times I hear with brands that are very content focused, like, Hey, some of the organic stuff is great when I can really start building a community and a following. Um, you know, people are really interested in following along, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to purchase. You know, so how do you how do you think about um, you know getting from that community and, and you've put the work in and there's people in love with the brand to you know kind of parlaying that at the end of the day really into like okay now let's you know either give the right offers or what, what does it take to to get purchases out of that? So it's it's a great point and. I, I wish I could sit here and tell you that our organic traffic converts at the same percentage as our paid traffic, but it is nowhere near the same, nowhere near, literally a fraction of it. But it is a numbers game in the same sense. We just know we need 20x more organic traffic to get to get the same results. Yeah. Um, if, if you have a product that is a product market fit, if it's having success in ads, and you're getting an acceptable acquisition cost or return on ad spend where you're able to build and scale a little bit and prove, prove validity of the product, the, the, the organic side comes. It's just, it's just you, you have to put a, a lot more, you throw a lot more stuff at the wall for it to stick. It just doesn't convert at the same rate. And it's a much um, more um, methodical, multi-step multi-touch purchase. Um, you know, we're able to get get customers sometimes in 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 one click in an ad, sometimes two clicks or three, but organic customers, um, it's it's significantly more or 17, 18 touches, which is yeah. which is wild. Do you have a feel for kind of like what's the right mix between, you know, I guess maybe purely entertainment, educational type content versus like, you know, really mixing a CTA in there and saying, Hey, you know, come, you know, this is our box unboxing. Like let's wrap it up with, Hey, this is actually a sponsored post. Like come by, come by this box kind of thing. They don't work. The, C yeah. the, the CTAs, the, the hard sales, um, never, never work. There's, um, which is for, for organic, obviously they work on, on the paid side. You have to have them for the paid side. Yeah, on the organic, it's they we don't get me wrong, we still spread them in. Um, and and we're always hoping for a, a different result than we get every single time. <laughs> still do them because at the end of the day, you do want it in there, even if it's not converting, so people see it and they they understand. They might they might see it and then it that's touch number 14, and they see five more pieces of content that are not hard sale and and they end up buying. So I think it serves its its use of being in there. But I, I look at the the videos that have driven us the most sales. Um, they were talking about products, but they weren't pitching it at all. They were showing a product in use. And people saw that identified and said, oh, well, I want that because I, I want to do what they did in the, in the video. Um, I think that's, I, I think it's, it's not selling. Not selling but showcasing a product sells best. Can we talk a little bit about building community? I know in with the TikTok and current 1776, it's probably easier when you're pulling someone in who has community and building off of that. What kind of advice would you give for a brand that is starting with no community or very, very small amount of community? What are the important pieces that you employ to, to really scale it up and build it? So, so you have to have, because you know we're not all in person, you have to have some kind of um, 
meeting place, right? Whether it's a, a, a creating a Reddit style forum or the easiest thing, which we used to have a forum and we converted to a Facebook group. Um, the the Facebook group is great because it, it puts everybody in 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 one spot, and I think it's key to to interact with with the customers. Um, in the in the infancy, it's it's you driving it. You have to drive it. You have to um, be interacting with their posts or making posts and asking questions to to drive engagement. You have you have to be in the driver's seat of it. Um, you can't you can't build it and expect them to come. It's I wish it were that simple. You have to you have to build it and then be playing on it for for them to be be attracted attracted to it. I think that's the easiest easiest way, right? You try to and, it, and maybe the group. So, you know, our our Facebook group at this point is a members only group. It's it's part of the membership of the subscription. You get access to their. If you're not a subscriber, you can't be in there. Um, and but what I've seen work is I've seen people making a Facebook group that maybe isn't even necessarily based on your exact product. It could be the space that your product's in. Um, and you want to create a community of a resource for that that maybe higher um, topic and providing education in there or like-minded people. So I think there's a, a few different ways to to skin that cat of the group. Um, and, you know, depending on your business, I think if anyone's listening to this, right away you have a couple ideas and what your gut is saying the right group is, is the right group. I'm curious too, I, I always seem to want to ask about this. <laughs> I don't know what this says, but with Battlebox's demographics and looking at building community on Facebook, and then I think about Gen Z and their unwillingness to be sold to, or at least interact with content. That's, you know, very obviously calls to action and overly salesy. What do you, when you look at your demographics and you're thinking about selling to them, what are the different approaches that you're taking based on generations or based on platform? It's different for each one or. Yeah, it, it, is, it, it. It, it is a little different. You look at um the, so our, our sweet spot is, is 24 to 45. Um, that's just the ideal male. So 90% of our, our buyers are male. The 10% that are females, 50% of them are buying it as a gift for a male. So it's a very, very, very male centric demographic. Um, it, the talking about the 24 year old or the 45 year old, they're definitely different buyers. Um, the, the, the older group will, um, creating a sense of urgency, um, the traditional old school, Hey, there's only 200 of these to get like that works. Um, whether, I mean, it's, it's genuine, right. It make a special offer of 200 of them communicate it transparently say there's only 200 of these sense of urgency works. Um, the younger generation does, does not, they don't care. They don't care if there's 200, they'll wait for it to be over and you'll, You'll make an extra one for them because they're special. Um, it, it it's just it's a totally different sale. The the younger generation doesn't want to be sold to, um, and, and rightfully so. They 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 want to make their own decision. Um, so it's it's the value at that point of the content, right? And then eventually, it, it's a soft sale through the content, and eventually they'll 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 see some CTA and. They'll already be ninety nine percent of the way there, and they'll they'll take it. But it, it's it's totally different. Um, having our members only group on Facebook is a challenge too, because um, some of our younger customers aren't on Facebook. Um, but we we run into the the flip side of it. We'll have a, a TikTok going viral, and we'll drop it to the members only group, and people are like, TikTok, what's that? <laughs> um, I, I wish I wish there was honestly a better a better community option, but um, Facebook is has the best that I've seen, which which pains me to say because it doesn't meet all the needs of of our entire customer range. It's just the the best tool currently. It needs to be disrupted, honestly, because um, you know it's 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 wild now. You're looking at some of the the younger audience members, and they live in a world where there is, they never had a Facebook account 
which is kind of kind of crazy. Um, but it's it's true, right? Their first social account was either Snapchat or Instagram. And then, you know, we all, all the older people got on Facebook and now we're all getting on Instagram and Snap. So we've scared them over to TikTok and now we're all coming over to TikTok. So they'll go somewhere else. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very cyclical. That's a really interesting problem. So I think, you know, especially at the smaller side, when you're just getting started up, you know, if you're thinking that, hey, your membership community may have in it 50 people or 40 people as you're kind of getting started, you know, it's scary in that, like, well, you don't want to push people in there and then all of a sudden have have it be crickets in there. And you, you kind of gave a great answer of, of, you know, you've got to drive it and you've got to be pro- producing a lot of the, the you know, engagement and, and content in there. Um, but yeah, it's interesting as people get a little bit more spread out across platforms. I know even in our world, you know, I've been in a number of masterminds or, or different types of, you know, things on the marketing side where, you know, it's like, hey, for for this one, everybody's got to get Discord. For this one, you know, it's, we're doing it all through Slack. This one, we're gonna, you know, try to finagle something inside of LinkedIn. And it's, you know, kind of like a lot of times, it's a barrier to entry that people don't really want to jump over and learn an entire new platform because they're only, you know, it's so much bandwidth. And and this community, while it's very important to your brand, probably isn't the most important thing in that individual's life. Right. Um, so yeah, kind of interesting. I don't know if there's a question wrapped up in there, but uh, but yeah, kind of how you how you do that and and walk that line. Yeah, SaaS providers listening or SaaS entrepreneurs <laughs> listening to this, like this is an opportunity. It's yeah. there because because you're right. It's it's we're running into this problem across all all aspects, right? Whether it's mastermind groups or brands commuting, creating community groups, it's it's tough. Where are you, where are you going to go? And we've we've talked about it. Okay, do we? Do we do we do we convert it to a Slack group or do we offer a Slack group as well? But then like Slack doesn't work because you run across people that that maybe aren't their their profession or their job isn't isn't like Uber business related, so they don't even know what Slack is. Um, it's yeah, there's no right answer. We're still clearly <laughs> just trying to figure it out. Yeah, maybe that's the uh, the baseline, right? Just keep keep trying things, keep throwing things against the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, I had come into this conversation thinking we were going to talk a ton more about subscription. Um, and looking at the time, I, I think uh, maybe we'll leave it there and, and save that for a, a future uh, conversation. Sure. Um, this has been super, super enlightening and, and a great deep dive into all things content and community. Um, we like to take a little bit of time at, at the end of these um, just to... Uh, to see if you have anything to, to kind of give your shameless plug uh, for those who don't mind being sold to, I guess. Um, yeah, tell us a little bit about uh, Battlebox as a brand, where people can find you and and uh, what they'll find when they get there. Sure. Um, so Battlebox, B-A-T-T-L-B-O-X. Um, there's no E in there. That's that's why. That's why it doesn't have an E, because with an E, the domain was taken. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can just Google Battlebox. Um, it'll, it'll come up. Right up. You can misspell it too. It'll still come up. Um, you can jump in Netflix and search for Battlebox there too. Our TV show Southern Survival will come up. Um, shameless plug, but it's for a good reason. Um, onlinecaso.com. So all one word. It's my blog. I try to post um a lot of guest articles as well. Um, I think there's a a, a problem in the e-commerce space currently where a lot of the thought leaders just talk about wins and a lot of the thought leaders are self-proclaimed experts and they're not. Um, and the reality is, yes, there's some victories in the mix, but there's a, there's way more losses, right? And the losses are where you, you get your learnings and um, make it a point that like the, the L's we do take, we talk about them on, <laughs> on the blog because that's ultimately where, where the learning is. And more importantly, if someone else is reading it and maybe going down the same path, they can use my mistakes as kind of a, a roadmap on, oh, maybe we shouldn't do that because he tried that and it didn't work for this reason. Um, so it's kind of just a, a, a honest look, look at e-commerce. That's really, really cool. I'll uh, just bookmark that myself. <laughs> I love that too, because you're right. There is 
there is a, a culture around e-com of we don't share the losses. We only share the wins. I'm the expert. Come buy my course and start it all over again. So I love that there's community building and sharing all of our L's together. <laughs> Yeah, because no, you're you're spot on. It's 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 irritating and it's a little toxic. Um, some platforms are worse than others. I think Twitter is or X um, has has a lot of of the uh, yeah toxic people. <laughs> um, I guess I probably should have asked before your plug, but is there uh, something that uh, we didn't ask that you that you wanted to cover today, or anything uh, that we should have asked? Um, no, we did just get back from Texas. We put uh, five. So in our July box, we put five golden tickets randomly in in the box. You got a golden ticket. We flew you to Texas. Um, we put you in a tank and you uh, aim the tank at a target downrange. And if you were to hit the, the target, we were going to give you $100,000, which is kind of like, Willy Wonka meets Mr. Beast. It's <laughs> just crazy. And it was interesting because it wasn't a sales tool. We announced it the day after our selling window closed. So if you saw the video announcing it, it was too, and you weren't a customer, it was too late. Um, which was cool because we we wanted our customers to understand this was genuinely being done for them and wasn't a sales tool. So the best way to do that is literally make it impossible for it to be a sales tool. Um, so really, really cool. It was a lot of fun. We posted some videos on YouTube about it. Um, definitely different shooting tanks. Awesome. For, for money. Did, it, did anyone hit it? No. <laughs> which, is, which was really disappointing. Because um, we genuinely wanted it to be one. And the way we structured it, it was it was an insurance policy. Um, much like a hole in one or a half court shot win the car. Same, same principle, same type of underwriter. So we genuinely, we had already paid for the policy and it was expensive because we, but we wanted someone to win. Um, so I think it just, it gave us some learnings. Um, the video could have, would have been a lot cooler and the event <laughs> would have been a lot cooler if someone would have won. So the next event we're going to do, and we're going to do another one soon, um, there's going to be a guaranteed winner that we're going to give some you know, decent amount of, of cash too. It's just awesome. a good story too, to help someone. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Well, great. Um, yeah. Like I said, it's been an awesome conversation. I think we covered a ton of ground, but we left a, a ton uncovered too. So uh, I might just be reaching back out uh, in coming months to, to hopefully do this again. Yeah. I'd love to come back. Awesome. All right. Uh, Lindsay, would you read us out? Yeah. And thank you again, John, so much. This was so great <laughs> for so many reasons. And uh, thank you to those watching and tuning into e-commerce marketing with the Pitbulls. Don't forget to subscribe to get all of our YouTube videos as soon as they're released. And if you find this show valuable, we'd really appreciate you giving us a like and we will see you all next time. Hey, it's Andy. I'm here with Percy, the original PPC Pitbull. Thanks for checking us out today. If you're ready to take the next step in your digital marketing journey, come on over to ppcpitbulls.com and book a free strategy session. We'll take a few minutes to get to know you and your brand, and I promise you'll leave with actionable insights that you can implement today. Working together, we're going to get you on the right track towards reaching your unique e-commerce goals.